Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, The Bee Whisperer. It is the 2nd of January and uh, winter has disappeared here in Maine. We've got almost no snow. I didn't have my camera with me yesterday when we came out for a walk, but it was about 50 degrees yesterday and just about every hive had bees flying in and out of. So I was actually very relieved because about a bit over a week ago, maybe 10 days ago, we had a real storm which blew the tops off these two hives, even though they had lots of rocks on and things. In fact, you see that covers on upside down deliberately because it was full of ice when I came back out. And when these covers blew off, it was pouring with rain, really strong wind. And then the temperature dropped down to about 10 degrees and everything was frozen. But I even saw bees flying in these two hives yesterday, which could mean that they were still alive. It could also mean that they're being explored by bees that were flying around other hives. So that's not, well, no, no certainty that these two hives are alive. But now that the ice has melted on this, I could turn that over. But for now, I'll leave it over there. It's not going to do any harm being upside down. It's not going to leak into the hive and the extra water in there is serving as extra weight. So I don't have many styrofoam hives, but uh, that's the risk of styrofoam hives is that they will, uh, they need extra weight on the top to keep the covers down. Otherwise, as far as I could see yesterday, I could see bees around most of, if not all of my hives single story and double story hives. I can see some live bee there coming out. It's warm enough for the cluster to break apart. It's in the high 50s, high 40s right now, maybe mid 40s. It's a colder, damper day today. But, uh, I have no reason to believe that uh, I'll have any problems getting these through winter so far. But the uh, big difference this year so far between this and other winters is it has been exceedingly warm. We've had a lot more warm weather this winter up to this point than I've known so far. Now, just in my limited experience, uh, 20, 30 years of keeping bees. This is the warmest I've experienced it up to this time of year. So even my new got bees going in and out the top. But the, uh, basically we've had days that have, uh, we've had maybe two weeks worth of days altogether that it didn't get above freezing. Uh, and for beginning of January, that's not many at all. I would have expected normally about 30 days. I would say that in fact, we probably had probably less than 10 days that didn't get above freezing. Uh, it may be even less than that. Um, but uh, that basically that means that the clusters are not having to hunker down really tight, which is good because it means the clusters are bigger. They're looser. They're covering more honey. My concern about it though, is that with this last week of weather where it's reached close to 50 many consecutive days, at least in the mid forties to low fifties, what it could have done is started very early brood rearing. And if we've had very early brood rearing, what can happen then is if this cluster is Let's say the cluster in the hive is the size of a basketball right now because it's warm enough that they can cover quite a bit of area. That means they can cover a lot of food, that sort of thing. Um, then they start laying eggs because they've got the heat up enough in the hive and that's what can certainly happen. And uh, if they start laying eggs, now they're anchored to that point because they won't leave that brood. And so assuming they keep that, they don't, uh, re-eat the eat up the eggs just to stop brood rearing which can happen also but assuming if they start rearing brood properly 
then they're anchored there and that means that if it gets cold the cluster has to stay put and if it gets colder the cluster gets smaller so let's say the cluster goes from the size of a basketball down to the size of a soccer ball maybe an inch less in diameter that means they can they're half an inch further away from the food than they used to be now with the brood needing to be kept there the cluster cannot move from that point so it can stretch towards the food but there is a risk then of starvation with the hive full of honey because the cluster has now had to get smaller if the water if the air temperature now gets much colder and so the only concern i've got right now having had all this warm weather is that we then get a sudden and sustained really cold period uh, and if we get three weeks of really cold weather the cluster can't expand and can't move onto new food and there's potential there for hive losses i've seen that happen before it's much less common if you've insulated your hives well because that's the whole point is you can serve that energy keep the clusters big and fluffy as opposed to tight and compact and really small so that's something to consider for those of you who know they can get the hives through the winter without insulation. Yes, most of the time you can, but there are certain circumstances and this could be one of them where you could end up losing hives because of that. So fingers crossed, that won't be an issue. I'm, uh, I even saw bees coming in and out of my, the upper entrances of this hive here see if we I can't see anything there I don't know well everything should be fine so I'm hoping that my other yards didn't have lids blow off I don't have any other yards where the hives have uh, styrofoam covers I've got three four colonies in this is five colonies in this yard with a styrofoam cover but the, the rest will weigh down pretty well. So we won't know how bees are faring for a little while yet, but uh, the good news about a warm winter is it means that the bees, let's say a warm winter, there hasn't been a lot of flying because most of the days prior to this recent spell have been in the high 30s, low 40s, which means which is, a, in my view, one of the perfect temperatures for overwintering. Because it means that the bees are clustered, but not flying, but they're not having to struggle to keep warm either. So that sort of 35 to 40 degrees is great, uh, which has been the bulk of the time between the fall and now. The times that use the most food are when we have high temperatures and there's a lot of flying take place or we have really low temperatures and they're really having to eat a lot of food to generate heat so uh, and I'm struggling for breath at the moment because I had a pretty bad cold over the last few days so I probably sound weird uh, and I'm more out of breath than normal so hopefully everything's going to be fine here uh if we get an average winter now, that'll be great. What I'd love to see is this sort of weather from February, mid-February onwards and get an early, early start to my uh, production of spring bees. That will be maybe asking a little bit too many favors from him upstairs. So we'll uh, hope for the best. There's a long way to go this winter. But so far, I would have taken this, uh, this weather any day if it was offered to me. So this has been a great winter so far. What we don't want is too much up and downs. We've had a few ups, but only one significant down in the weather. Um, and those ups and downs are where the real problems occur. If we have medium, modestly warm weather, and then a sudden rise, that's not a problem. It's where it's high and then it suddenly goes down. That's where we have problems. Anyway, keep your fingers crossed. Hope your bees are doing well. Would wish you the best of luck for 2023. And is throwing a ball nearly got me. 
throwing the ball for the dogs. But uh, for now, I'm going to sign off. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.